While researching my books, I've personally investigated hundreds of abduction cases. But one man's story truly haunts me. His name is Jesse Long. He claims to have been abducted many times since he was a boy, and the abductions he describes are terrifying. If what Jesse tells me is true, then there is a very surprising future in store for all of us. Jesse, when do you first recall being abducted? My first abduction occurred in 1957, when I was five years old, in Rogersville, Tennessee, a very small town in Upper East Tennessee. My brother John was with me at the time. Uh, above the hill behind our house, we came up on the, what appeared to be a round house under construction. And one man, a taller looking figure, he had a rod, a long rod in his hand. A light was emitted from it and we were paralyzed. It is at this point that Jesse Long's conscious memory of what happened ends. He says it's only through hypnosis that he's been able to remember the rest of this first abduction. <laughs> what you are seeing is actual footage of Jesse undergoing hypnotic regression. You will not be able to... I remember being taken into the craft, taken into one room. I was placed on a very cold, flat table. My brother was separated and he was taken into another room. <laughs> they were doing something down to my legs. I could feel them poking and prodding around my legs. According to Jesse, his abductors inserted a small item, an alien implant, into his left shin. And it was in my body for 34 years. Could you feel it inside you? What did it feel like? It was always painful. I always had to wear my socks below the incision point because it was painful. In 1991, Jesse had the foreign object removed from his leg. There it is. This is actual footage of that procedure. That's a good half inch long, isn't it? This is the object that was in my leg. And unfortunately, during the initial test that was done on it, it was broken into two pieces. But that allowed us to look at the inside. Some have dismissed the object as simply a shard of glass. But when it was analyzed at Southwest Research Institute, a materials analysis facility in Texas, the conclusion suggested a greater mystery. According to the lab's report, the object revealed a very remarkable composition and exhibited unique surface characteristics that cannot be explained, and that the questions outnumber the answers. When the object was removed, I was convinced that whatever this object was had something to do with all of my abductions. Jesse Long believes he has experienced a number of abductions since that first incident in 1957. And they became more and more horrific as he grew into an adult. Most of my abductions occurred very similarly. When they brought me into the craft, they would take me down a long hallway. They would place me on a flat table. Of course, I was paralyzed and had to be because I was kicking and screaming. I didn't want to be there. The experiments on the table included a sperm extraction. The sperm extraction procedure is the most traumatic. 
and has caused me the most problems in that they actually force me to crossbreed with what seems to be a female being. And those people tend to be the people who are boundary deficit disordered. They have problems with relationships. They always say, I've always felt like an outsider. I, I don't feel like I belong. They can't hold jobs. Uh, they just have a tough time in life. And telling this person who's been lost and outside and alone that they do belong, that they're an abductee, that they have an identity, and that there are other people just like them answers all of those questions for them. Jesse. When you tell people about your experiences, do they believe you? You know, it's not my job to convince anybody. It's my job just to tell you what I've experienced. If you believe it, fine. If you don't believe it, I don't care. This is evidence that can't be ignored. And the story just gets more and more disturbing. What Jesse says happened to him in 1990 may answer the question that hangs over every abduction account. Why is this being done? I was driving from California to New Orleans, and right outside of Albuquerque, New Mexico, on I-40, my car was lifted off the interstate up into a craft with me in the car. taken aboard the craft, placed on a table. I was presented with a baby, was told, this is your child. What happened then? And there were nine other children standing along the wall. They all looked at me, and I could see, yes, they were mine. Each of the children who were standing along the wall walked up to me lying on the table, and they each touched my hand as they walked by and looked me straight in the eyes. And they walked on out of the room. And the message I was getting from them was, we're okay, thank you. If you could confront your abductors, what would you say to them? If I could sit down with one of them right now and ask them one question, I would want to know why me and for what reason. We have thousands and thousands and thousands of people coming forward with these cases, not only around the United States, but around the world as well. David Jacobs based his book, The Threat, on the explosive issue of hybrids, the crossbreeding of aliens with humans. For Jacobs, stories like Jesse Long's are only the beginning. I think we are looking at a catastrophic situation. I think we are looking at a disaster. We are seeing a unified program here with these beings. A program of physiological exploitation by one species of another. I don't know this sounds absolutely insane. We're looking at a colonization program in some way.